This is the initial 2019 spring flood outlook from the National Weather Service Twin Cities office. We cover the Minnesota River Basin and tributaries, the Upper Mississippi from Aitken to Wabasha and tributaries, and the St. Croix, Chippewa, and Eau Claire River Basins in Wisconsin. Uh, the typical spring flood factors that we'll take a look at include past precipitation and how it relates to soil moisture, our snowpack, which is the fuel for stream flow in the spring, and the frost depth, which will determine whether melting snow will soak into the soil or will it run freely over the top. And then, of course, the weather outlook, which is the biggest wild card every year and will be the main driver uh, in determining whether we enhance or slow the snow melt this spring. Let's take a look at those factors. The water year precipitation, we have had uh, ample moisture this year um, from 6 to 8 inches of water in western Minnesota, increasing to around 12 inches into Wisconsin. That is all above normal for the entire area with about an inch or two in central Minnesota and two to four inches above normal in southern Minnesota into Wisconsin. The winter season snowfall and departure from normal, we've had over 40 inches of snow now through the entire area. A large swath of at least five feet of snow has fallen. This is solidly above normal and it's approaching double the normal amount in southern Minnesota and western Wisconsin. So plenty of snow on the ground. And what does that mean for the amount of water that's available? The snow water equivalent for, uh, for our area is uh, solidly three to four inches through the entire, the, through all basins, uh, with some areas of five to six inches in the upper Minnesota, the upper Mississippi, and in the St. Croix, Eau Claire, and Chippewa rivers in, in uh, Wisconsin. So this is higher than we've seen recently, higher than any year that we've had since about 2014, and well above normal for the end of February. So if we revisit those flood elements, um, our, our soil moisture is near to above normal for the entire area, especially southern Minnesota is above normal in soil moisture before we froze up. The snowpack is above normal, many places significantly above normal. There's plenty of water on the ground ready to melt and start running into the streams once we warm up. The frost depth, uh, we did not show that, but we have about a two to four foot frost depth over the entire region. That's a fairly deep frost for uh, late February. And so for the spring of 2019, our snowmelt flood threat is higher than it's been for the past few years. Uh, we really will have to take a look at the weather forecast for March in, into April to see whether or not we will increase that threat or decrease that threat. So taking a look at some of those forecast trends, the temperature trend for the next two weeks from uh, the Climate Prediction Center shows a continued below normal temperatures and severely below normal at that for the first uh, couple of weeks of March. We'll be looking at temperatures 20 to 30 degrees below normal at times uh, through the period. There will be a chance of some more snow falling, especially over the southern part of the area. So um, if anything, we will be uh, keeping the snow that we have on the ground and continue to maybe even increase it a little bit um, through early to mid-March. As we go to the later part of the month, the, this is the monthly forecast for, this, for the uh, entire month of March. Uh, it still shows a below normal temperature um, that's heavily influenced by the first two weeks. We'll have to really kind of see what happens for the second part of the month. Um, and at this time, the precipitation is uh, no real signal as to above or below normal. So looking at that earlier statement about the flood threat being higher than the past few years, um, early indications are for a cooler and drier than normal conditions the first half of March. Um, this could at least keep the snow in place, maybe give us a little more, more of a snowpack as we get into, say, March 10th through 14th. After that, long-range models indicate some moderating temperatures and precipitation are possible. So the main point is that we are going to have to watch those forecasts as we move through March and then be prepared should there be big changes in those forecasts. So we'll take a look at the probability of exceeding flood levels at our main river forecast points. Uh, these forecasts are available at the link on your screen. After this uh, presentation is over, I encourage you to go back to this link and uh, go to the map and take a look at your uh, favorite spot to, uh, that, or the, the spot that you're most interested in uh, from that map. Click on those, that, that point, whichever one it might be, and look for the probability information tab and select the uh, probability of, of exceeding flood stage during the entire period graph. It will look something like this here. The black line represents the current forecast. The blue line represents the historical average. And if your black line is above or to the left of the blue line, that means your flood threat is above normal for that location. 
Here's one example. We'll take a look at the Mississippi River at St. Paul and evaluate the probability of reaching the major flood stage, which is 17.0 feet. Our current forecast, this black line, where it reaches or where it crosses the purple line, which is major flood stage, is right about 64%. And that's this spot right here. In a normal year, that number might be closer to about 12%. So as you can see, 64% versus a normal of 12%, we have a much higher chance of reaching that flood stage in 2019 based on our current conditions, soil moisture, and the weather forecast over the next month. Again, go back to that link, take a look at find your, your favorite spot, and evaluate the graph. That uh, information is also available via text. Um, if you uh, again at this link on the screen, you can take a look at a graph that has the, the numbers for each of our forecast points. You want to look at the two columns, the CS, the HS column. The CS is the current forecast, HS is historical. If your current is greater than historical, that means you have a much higher threat uh, than normal of reaching the different flood stages. And uh, if you are in an area that is susceptible to snowmelt flooding, uh, make sure you're ready for a flood. Uh, Minnesota HSEM and the Department of Public Safety has sent some information out, uh, as well as FEMA on flood insurance. And a reminder that it takes 30 days for flood insurance to go into effect once you purchase it. There's a couple of links for it with uh, information for you to take a look at this. And so for upcoming outlooks, the next outlook will be updated on March 7th. And then again, throughout the spring, as significant changes happen or new information becomes available, if you're in an area that is subject to flooding, pay close attention to the forecasts. Watch for rapidly rising temperatures or heavy rainfall on the horizon. You can start with the long range outlooks from CPC as we showed in this briefing. And then as we get closer, check out the seven day forecast from the NWS Twin Cities. That's at weather.gov MPX. And the river forecasts can also be found uh, from that link or uh, the, uh, the more direct link shown on your screen. So thank you for uh, taking a look at the flood outlook and uh, good luck this spring. And uh, we'll be keeping everybody updated on what's happening.